what if I told you you can create a script that's automatically downloading files from your SFTP, FTP server and uh, doing exactly what you were doing manually. Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to show you step by step how to deal with this. First of all, my FTP server or SFTP server is going to be a Linux and I'm going to connect from my Windows PC to this SFTP with PowerShell. There's a few things you need to download to get this working properly and I'm going to show you what it is. The first thing what you need is WinSFTP optimization. This tool here is going to download a zip file which contains files of files that are needed for this tutorial for this script to be working the thing you're gonna see is something like this here we need win scp net dll i created a shortcut so i could go on properties and copy the target link now this is the dll file we are going to define in the powershell script if we open the script i'm going to show you my script right now this is my script which is working perfectly the first thing i do here is i'm defining the dll file this is the link to download the zip file and this is the path to the file up here in the perm you can write your local path and your remote and later on you can use you can use the variable i'm sorry my keyboard went crazy you can use variable and then like remote path plus local path and so on you don't have to define the path all the time you can use that but in this tutorial i'm not going to use that first we're going to show the system the script where the dll files are after that we're going to create a session with the help of the win win csp and we're going to we're going to define the protocol if it's sftp which is port 22 we have to use sftp if it's just ftp then we're going to use port 21 in that case we will remove letter s i'm going to use sftp host name is the ip address or the dns name to this remote ftp server username as it sounds username in this case i'm just this is tutorial in this tutorial i'm going to use root but in if you're gonna use uh, this script please uh, you have to create a specific user just for the ftp i'm gonna start showing the video of how to connect with the password later on i'm gonna show you how to use the private key as the method of authentication now we need to define in the script what the remotely remote server has a fingerprint to find the fingerprint open your linux server which is probably going to be used as a sftp server use a command called ssh keygen lf and then define the host rsa keys you could copy paste this command this is the fingerprint this is what we need in the script get back to the script one second there we are and define that right after we're done with setting up everything this is where the magic happens here we define session open to open up the session with the help of 
win CSP and use the binary. Now I'm defining session get files, which means get some files from there. Star means everything. When this server, uh, when this script connects, it's gonna grab everything it can see. Grab everything and move it over to copy over to my D disk and to the FTP test. Check for any results. Here we have some small forage loop which is going to print out if the, if everything went successful. At the end we're gonna close the session because having having sessions open all the time is just eating capacity. We need to close every session when you're done. I will show you now. Just going to move this up over here. I'm gonna show you when I run this script what's happening in this FTP test folder which I defined in the script. Now let's see what's gonna happen. As you can see some things are popping up and this is because we said we told the script to grab everything and the script is literally grabbing everything. If we go back to the Linux server and go LSA which means show everything the script took this and this and that. In this case you would probably go make a directory called sftp and then um, if we go back to the script there we are now we could probably go ahead and use sftp and then star this is defining to go in defining for the script go into the folder directory sftp and grab everything from that folder. Um, just for a example, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test test. All right, I created a file which is going to be just for the testing. Let's run this script one more time. I'm gonna first I'm gonna delete this uh, files here and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the script one more time just to see what's happening on the script. Uh, we got a error message. What's the I probably have to define root as well here just because of yeah exactly I had to define the root as well which is a little bit boring but you saw there is the file we had created and uh, oh you can see the window over here I'm sorry let me show you what I have done uh, so the script was having a hard time finding the sftp folder because I didn't I did not define the root before. I'm gonna show you what I mean with that. Let's go ahead and script run the script again. It's gonna say error listing directory. This is because it cannot find the directory. Go ahead and just use that should be good to go. Now we see here the report downloaded something from the remote side to, to our uh, destination. And if you remember guys, 
we created a test file as I said perfect now this is when you can let's say you use this with password many of the FTP servers are let's say asking for a private key authentication now to do that you would have to generate some keys with help of the generator for instance you can do it with Podigan Podigan I'm gonna show you, share my screen here one second I'm sorry if you cannot see now this is the Podigan and uh, it's generating keys which is perfect I'm gonna generate a key without any password so keep in mind that no password given to the key RSA 248 sounds great do that here you're right now let's save the public key is something we need to add to the authorized keys that's the first thing we're gonna do we're going to do so our root user is going to connect with this public key great now that other thing is we could disable the password login if we go into the uh, SSH SSH uh, we could uh, remove the the password uh, authentication and just use the public key authentication mm, which we have to do to be honest uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and type no to that we will be having problem to reconnect with put the when we are Great. Uh, great. All right, guys. Now we have to save our wonderful keys. I'm going to save this case. I'm going to save uh, the private key first. And I'm going to save this somewhere on my disk for instance let's say let's say we go into the download of we are you let's say we set private here okay um my key my private key is in right here and I'm going to grab my path I'm going to define my private key into that I will remove the comment and I will move this one step I'm gonna remove the password let's do this hopefully Jesus Christ I'm gonna go I'm gonna use a comment section to just remember the password okay now we have we defined it uh, in Linux server that we don't want to use password anymore we're gonna use public key authentication now this means if I'm not having anything wrong this should be working perfectly let's try oh yeah look at that without any password guys uh, I'm gonna remove my I'm gonna remove my files I will show you one more time just so you can see now this is without password this is only with the private key perfect 
Isn't that beautiful? And now the biggest question is how do we get this to be set up as maybe as a schedule? In Windows, you have something called schedule. Uh, task schedule that's the name and I know you cannot see my screen which I must share immediately with you all right if we go back here and we create a task hopefully you can see when I right click nope you cannot all right instead of this I'm gonna go and just I'm gonna show you my display all right here we're gonna create a task powershell script uh, ftp and description is ftp and run whatever users are logged on because it should be running all the time triggers new daily all right doesn't matter doesn't expire it's enabled great action new program power shell dot exa now that's the program it's going to use and the argument should be file and then you define where the script is so i'm gonna go all right there is my script um, right no that's it that is the script um, I'm gonna save this I with the files so I can see if my script is working properly and we have condition nothing it's triggers it's gonna trigger every every day daily we have action all right uh, oh, we have to type our password for which is okay now to see if this this is working properly. Just right click, run. The best way to see if something is working properly. We saw we deleted the file uh, before and now the file is here. So yeah, it's definitely doing good. Refresh, PowerShell, it went perfectly. Okay, delete, it's empty. Oops, it's empty, you can see it's empty, right? Yep. Yep, there it is guys. So that's how you make a script to connect to FTP, SFTP.